Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard. This time I'm going to be slicing up this uh, big old white oak here, which uh, I picked up on my brand new trailer, which I built. If you missed the build of the trailer or the pickup of the log using the trailer for the first time, I'll leave you a link to those. So this thing is uh, righteously big, I'll say. It's uh, we at 11 feet long. We're over four feet here at the butt and a little over three feet there at the top. So as always, let's take a walk around the log real quick take a look at what we're dealing with and then we'll get into doing some cutting. So like I said, we're about 11 feet long right now and up here we have the nice little crotch section. So we have a crotch on this side and we also have a crotch coming out on this side too. So I have aligned things with the log right now so that these two crotches are parallel to the ground which should expose the crotch figure in the, uh, in the actual slabs. Interesting notes, you know, not a whole lot of crazy things going on here. We have this old split here which uh, if we take a look at the bottom, which we'll see later on, there was like a lightning strike or something that caused the whole uh, outside of the tree, the sapwood section to be completely like blown off. So actually I have the upper section, which is right here. So you can see it, it's missing this whole chunk right here and the tree's trying to grow around itself again. So probably a lightning strike at some point, uh, or that's really the only thing I've ever seen that causes something like that. So. We have that, in this case, that actually oriented towards the bottom, so it's not a huge deal. It's right over here and kind of curves around a little bit to the bottom. So that's what this section that's missing down here is. So we'll get down to that uh, eventually. Most interesting and exciting note for me is the iron staining on this end of the log. So we have this kind of blue-ish black stain right here and also a little one right here which indicates that there is some embedded iron somewhere in this tree, but before the top. If it was further up on the tree, you would see the standing on both ends, but because it's only on this end, it's somewhere contained in this log. So it is uh, somewhere at this height in the log, but somewhere longitudinally that way. So we'll see what that is when we get in there. Could be something big, could be something small. Uh, it's a pretty big stain though, so it's probably something pretty big. So we'll see how many blades we go through for this thing. <laughs> You can see we also have that split there, which should, well, a lot of it will be eliminated based on the orientation of the log. But as we get towards the bottom here, we'll have a split in our slabs, which should be, you know, interesting enough for, uh, for slabs. Some more visual interest. So this thing being 11 feet long and with its uh, rough diameter here at the end of 52 and 37 at the top, puts the estimated weight somewhere around 7,700 pounds. So close to four tons. So pretty big log to get on the trailer for the first time and it went perfectly well. And uh, I'm just really excited to get into this thing. One thing to note right now is it's not fully stable. You can see I can rock it a little bit. So before I get to actually cutting, I'm gonna grab the, uh, the skid steer and we'll do a little bit of stabilizing. So this thing isn't rocking around while I'm trying to cut it. And then we'll get into actually sawing it. I'm thinking the first cut will be at 40 inches. That should uh, remove enough of the curvature of the log to produce a nice flat area for the stack. So that's the, uh, the sequence of events here. Should help. <laughs> yeah, that's probably better.
So I think now we are deep enough into the log where I have enough width here to put down onto my stack. Uh, down here, just let's go up here a little bit. You know, 28 inches, that's pretty wide. It's probably like 18 down there. It's gonna be uh, pretty good. So I'm gonna call this one slab number one. This will be the first actual slab off of here. Let's take a quick look with the water, see what we're dealing with here because this, uh, the grain looks pretty crazy. It's got some really dark, like, starration kind of thing going on. 11 feet of white oak. That is some cool grain. We have all of these uh, much larger cathedral things down here because we had that whole buttress that we just cut off. So we're kind of coming into the grain as we're swooping through here. But uh, it was pretty clear as far as wood goes. Like, cool grain. Not a whole lot of weird stuff, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure that will change. So at this point, I'm just going to go through and cut the first round of slabs. So we'll just uh, make some slices until we get down, until we can't cut any more with the throat, or until we hit something along the way and have to stop. So it looks like we are just gonna get into the blue stain now, but you can see this guy is probably gonna be fully encapsulated in the slab. So we're probably gonna miss that. And I, I don't know what's gonna happen here. We might, I don't know. That's, that's a lot of staining. So let's uh, just maybe, maybe, maybe say goodbye to this blade. Uh, this next one will be going right into the, uh, the bigger area of the blue stain. So maybe we'll hit something this time. Place your bets. Are we going to be uh, hitting something this time or what?
Nothing. So nothing in that cut, which is very weird because we went right through the middle of that blue stain. So I almost feel lied to at this point because most people tell you this log isn't even worth cutting because of that stain in there and potentially hitting something. But what might have have happened is that whatever was in this tree was removed. So thank you responsible person for removing whatever you hung in here before it got consumed by the tree. But we'll see. We'll see. Make another cut. Right in the middle. Right smack dab in the middle, nothing. Okay, so that uh, pretty much bottoms up the saw. I can't make another cut, so I think we'll get into offloading and stacking next. So we'll get, let's say we'll do like the first one or two, get them out of the way, and then we can keep cutting again. So I have a spot right back here. This log here is almost gone. So I'll leave you a link to the video cutting this thing in case you missed it. That was, uh, that one was what, the most steel I've ever cut through or something like that. It had the most amount of embedded metal in it out of any log I've ever cut, and still to this day holds that title. The, uh, the bottom two slabs here are sold already, so they have to go off their final drying. So I'm gonna stick those aside for now and get this area all ready to go to receive all these new slabs. I can just slide this off. That's not gonna happen. So I'm pretty excited. I'm gonna try my new slab flipper roller stand setup. So when I made these rotisserie stands, that was for the trailer build. I made them uh, out of scraps. So they're like way, way heavier than they need to be, which is kind of unfortunate because I like having them around, but their weight makes them ridiculous. Like I can't even pick them up. But being able to spin a slab around instead of aggressively, violently flipping it should be kind of a nice thing to have. All right. <laughs> so tired now. Right, get these things set up. So these are the slab rolling mounts that I uh, just welded up yesterday. Really simple. It's a piece of two inch angle iron with a piece of pipe welded to it. And now allow me to clamp this whole thing to the end of a slab and I can mount the whole slab between the stands and just roll it right over. And just because I know it'll bother somebody, this one's gonna go the other way. <laughs> Take that symmetry.
Let's do some water stuff. Oh my God, that was a good one. All right, so this is actually some pretty interesting stuff. We got some really wild grain in here, which I like a lot. It's a lot uh, nicer than normal cathedrals because of this, of course, the buttress root gave us this kind of weird thing down here. And then coming up here, we have these old limbs, which is what the kind of circles are. But check this out. This one's got a little bit of a burl starting to form here. So we got some burl pattern coming in here too. So, you know, pretty interesting thing. A little bit of bark inclusions around it too. So that's a, a good starter. I think it's a good um, indication of what we have ahead of ourselves in the log here. So I think I'm gonna grab one more. We'll get it stacked, take a look at it, and then we'll cut another uh, two. Oh, this is cool. Ah, I see here. A little momentum that time. Oh, yeah, we're getting a little further through that burl. So I got a little bit of burl right here. This is bark inclusion that runs all the way through here. And we are, oh, like an old limb. This used to be a limb down, way down here at some point. That's cool. But up here, we're getting through this limb that was coming out, I guess, that way technically, which had healed around itself. So that's very cool. Another one here too. So. Still kind of in the uh, plain sawn area. As we get further down into the log, we'll see a little more straight grain stuff versus this cathedral pattern. So let's head back to the saw and make a few more cuts. the blade's got any damage on it. Assumptions that we hit something because I think we're supposed to have hit something at this point, but teeth are all still here. And it's not like it's dull. Did I make that up? <laughs> Maybe I made that up. Maybe it 
was caught on something else. <laughs> okay, let's go again. See what happens. log is rocking. I'm gonna pull a blade out and put a new one on. I think maybe the blade is too dull for this cut with maybe. And the log is rocking around so I gotta stabilize it a little better. I saw the whole log like this. There we go. I see someone to push this out through. <laughs> okay. What's the band in the blade? Do you want me to get some gloves on? Sure. Ooh. Easy. There we go. Oh, yes. Let's get a new blade. Hwah! Human power, sir. That seems much better. Here we go. So I don't think I uh, hit anything again. <laughs> Nothing in there. I'm gonna move another one and then uh, some water toss and uh, some more song, I guess.
Okay. Boop. <laughs> that is pretty darn awesome. All right, so starting up here, we got a little bit of this old limb here, another one up here with this little tiny cookie there in the middle. You know, this one's got not a whole lot of crazy things going on. We're getting all the way through that limb, or at least most of the way through that. A little bit of that burrow left. We do have these bark inclusions in the middle here. And if you come all the way down here, we have a little bit of that blue stain up in here. So maybe there is something embedded beneath the surface there, but it's a pretty clear looking slab though. A lot of, a lot of good wood in there. That's wet. All right, let's grab another one. That is some serious staining. Must have just missed whatever it was. Oh, oh. Check this out. Look at that blue stain. That is some that is intense blue staining. And here we go. So nothing on this side that I can tell that was hit. So either whatever was in there was removed or it's embedded in the wood that's in the slab right now. What's interesting about white oak is it stains really easily when it comes in contact with iron. So you can see staining here already from my pallet forks. That's just on the surface, but white oak will stain super quickly. So don't leave it, sit on something with iron in it because it will stain even deeper than that. So you can see we're starting to get into some more tighter grain material. We have a little bit of the flat sun area here with the cathedrals in the middle still. But as we get out towards the center of the tree, we're gonna see the growth rings start to come more vertical towards the surface and eventually it'll be to the quarter sun orientation, which was happening out here. We're starting to see a little bit of ray fleck towards the very outside of the slab. Let's get some measurements on this guy just to get some ideas. What we got here? 42 up in here. Let's see what we got through the middle here. 39. And then down here, we're at 47. So there's one 11 foot dining table right there. What do you think? Should we grab another one? Let's grab another one and then we'll saw some more. So it looks like we found what caused all of that staining. And I am really surprised actually, because it's just this tiny nail here. And actually this is barbed wire. So this was on a fence line at some point. So if you come in here, you can see there's two little pieces of steel in there. So there's a piece of barbed wire that's running through here. But that is, that's a lot of staining for such a small piece of metal. And what's interesting about that is most people see that much staining and assume it's a huge piece of steel and this log would have been thrown away just for that reason. But those little things don't really impact my saw at all. So that's why we never really notice anything. Oh, I got myself in the in the shoe. Oh boy. So we're starting to get into some crotch figure here from these limbs, which means these next ones will have a lot more crotch figure. You can see all of these bark inclusions and structural defects here in the middle. Got a little bit of burl action over here. And what's going on down here? You got a little bit of that crack kind of thing happening here and some staining from that uh, barbed wire, I guess. Very cool. Let me get some measurements quick. Let's just see what this is in the middle. Between the bark, 39. That's probably the same as the last one. So, probably get a scooch bigger than this. Oh, that's a big slab. 
So it's been a few days. We're gonna get back to the actual songs. So we're gonna get back to looking at these three slabs and then we'll get back to song. So I'm gonna get this guy into the stack and grab some water and we'll take a look at it. So if you look over here, we're starting to see a little bit of Rayfleck as we're starting to get closer to Coruscant out here. So the next slab or two will have a little bit more pronounced Rayfleck. And that stain is huge for that tiny little piece of wire. And then this is that defect starting to show itself on the surface. Up here, we're starting to get into that first crotch. So there's a tiny little bit of figure around there right now. We should start to see some more. There's a little bit of figure up in this area here too. This uh, this cut's not super great. It's got a little bit of a wave in it. Uh, toward, I think at this point that blade was getting a little bit dull. And the blades I have right now are not really the best for this hardness of wood. So there's that too. But we're still getting through it. A little bit of surfacing will clean that right up. So what's cool about this slab is it has this little piece here from the center of the tree when it used to be like a really tiny little baby young tree. So this thing is probably like, I don't know, like 15 years old at that point. And maybe it, what happened is it used to like fork out in two of them at once and then like part of it died and the rest of it grew around it again. It's kind of, that's pretty interesting, but based on where this is at and where we were with that steel, the, uh, the fence line was probably put up right around the same time this kind of happened. So trees are kind of cool like that. You have this nice historical reference of things that happened in its past. So all up and down here you can see all this big ray fleck over here. We're quarters on on that side and we're getting up into this little bit of crotch figure up here. So we got a nice banded crotch figure. We got some more ray fleck down here. It's looking pretty good. So let's grab the, the last one. Yeah, there was something that is a, like a uh, probably a staple, like one of those big old fence U shaped staple things. That's probably what that was. So that's uh, a little more steel than that blade could handle. But when we looked at it, there was no teeth missing or anything. So I don't know. Not a huge deal, I guess. But whoo, that was wavy. <laughs> Not very dramatic at that time. Yeah. Oh boy. Let's see what we got here. So the new blade kind of, it actually did a pretty good job compared to the old one. This is a lot flatter of a cut. So that's, uh, that's a nice change. This is crazy <laughs> and kind of sad, but that's the, uh, the nature of the game. So we got here, we got some, uh, Oh, we're pretty much kind of getting outside the Coruscant area now. We have some very small ray flex, so the ray flex not as huge, much more subdued. I like, I like this style of ray flex a lot better than the true full Coruscant, which is the giant ray flex. A little bit of that original tree, the sapling tree here in the middle, which is, I think that's really cool. And then there's this structural defect 
over there, but really straight grain stuff to the left and the right of the pith area. That's crazy. Come on, please don't fall off the backside of this saw. Uh, I don't know if they'll stop tall enough for this. Yeah, I don't know about this. <laughs> I'll just push it over. It should fall. It should flop. If I make it. Just out of my reach. There we go. Okay, so with great timing, the uh, new bimetal blades I ordered finally showed up. They took what five weeks since I ordered them to finally get here. So these are a little more suited for uh, harder woods like uh, we got here, white oak. This is a seven degree blade. I bought a couple of these bimetal blades and tried them out last month. I like them a lot. Uh, they stay sharp quite a bit longer. And at least the idea that I haven't tested yet is that in theory, if you cut through some steel with this, the blade shouldn't wander off. It'll probably still damage it, but you'll be able to get out of that cut without a big swoop in it. So these guys are twice the cost of the standard blades that I normally use, but if it means I don't have those dips, if I hit anything, it's worth it to me. So these blades are about 100 and, 103 a piece in a 10 pack, and the other ones are 48. So we will get one of these guys on here and get back to sawing finally. Yeah, those blades cut a lot better. <laughs> it's crazy what a difference three degrees makes. This is sawing so smoothly. And I think I'm able to saw a little bit faster too.
So I think that now that we're into this uh, weird cut thing and we don't have a whole lot of uh, material left, I'm gonna take one piece at probably like four inches thick and I'll have that in case I need any leg stock or thicker material that goes along with this wood. So well, since we flipped the entire log already, no need to flip slabs anymore. Except I do the shuffle them because the bottom slab goes next. Yeah, a little half swirl in the air action. Ah, oh. yeah, that's a much better cut. Those last ones are kind of embarrassing. <laughs> this is, uh, man, that's beautiful. Look how clear that is. Man, it's not, I don't have a whole lot of things to report here. We got some small kind of pin knot and burly looking things going on up here. But other than that, that's like, clear. Also, now that we're through both of those limbs, we're get, getting a lot more consistent width. So up here at the very top, we're at 35. This bulge here takes us to 43, but down through here, what we got? 38. And we're splaying out here to 44. So very consistent width for one piece. Just a slight little structural defect right here in the middle. Nice. Let's try this guy. Totally missed. Let's see if I can half redeem myself. That's a little better. So the biggest thing to note on here is gonna be this area through here. That's where that uh, lightning strike or kind of partially rotted area was. So we got a little bit of staining and rot infiltration through here as we're getting into that, uh, whatever that was, that weird thing. Although that's like the only thing because everything else is like, here's some really clear wood. <laughs> Let's check it out, more green. That's uniform.
I think I'm losing it. <laughs> so now you can see we're into the, uh, whatever, the lightning strike regrowth area, which is, uh, I think it's kind of a cool little detail trough kind of thing. Other than that, though, there's not a whole lot of crazy things going on here. We got some more fairly straight grain white oak. That was pretty cool. That wasn't. <laughs> so we're out into the sapwood out here. So there's not a whole lot of crazy things going on this side. The other side of the slab will be a little more uh, on the interesting side, but this will be handy in case you need any thick stuff, you know, table bases or what have you. So let me throw this rain cap on here and this log is donezo. Oh, so this was an amazing log. Yeah, it's just incredible like how much stain there was here from just those few small little pieces in there. And I think it just really goes to show that even if you have a little bit of staining in there, chances are most of the time it's not a big deal if you hit something small. At least on my saw, you can really cut through anything that size and it's not a huge deal. If you have a good blade on there and you keep them sharp, that's you know another really good tip. So. This one's gonna sit here for a little while and get some drying going on. I'm really looking forward to making something out of these things and getting at least some of this back to the church where this tree was uh, growing. What's interesting about this, this is so far back in the past of the tree. This was probably growing out like in a field before the area was developed. So if you're from around here in the Minneapolis area, this was growing in Golden Valley. So that fence is probably hanging there, you know, maybe like in the 1920s, the 1940s or something like that. So way before that area actually got developed. So kind of a cool little bit of history there. So I want to say a big thank you to John Evans, Clarity Films for being out here today and the day before this <laughs> to do some of the filming. It was a lot of fun to have him here. So a big thank you to him for all his work with the many cameras and the many, many hours of footage that he shot while he was here. <laughs> so that's going to do it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the sawmill, anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.